Hey, welcome to On The Chain. This is Jeff. What is going on? Lots of great stuff to talk about today. Good morning, Christina. How are you? Uh, Ripple XRP, can you spend a security? And what is the SEC's real agenda? That That is like top of mind, right? Um, SEC v Ripple, who really wins? Who is going to lose out of this whole thing? There's so much more, though. In the crypto space, I look overall crypto winners. Wow, I feel like the camera's way too close. We'll have to fix that on the next one. But anyhow, um, let's see what we've got here. We've got a ton. We've got a lot of great things. Make sure you guys go out and grab your cup of espresso before we get started here, mainly because you got to get fired up. You got to get fueled for this. Who's ready to start? Let's go. Welcome to On The Chain. All right, let's kick this thing off. We are good. So what do we got? What do we got to start with uh, today? I want to get into this one. So we're going to jump right into um, this uh, tweet here. I'm going to have to share my screen to make that happen. Um, but we're going to get into a tweet from uh, James Roll XRP. And I think this is a great place to start. Many of you may have already seen the tweet. You might have already seen a video or two uh, that referenced it. Um, I had a conversation with James yesterday about this um, and, it, and it was interesting. I said, you know what? Uh, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this right on the show first thing and we're going to get into this. So let's pull this up here. So this is an interesting one, right? So you got, <laughs> I, I, I kind of like the direction that he went with this. So if I paid for Ripple, um, on link to ink. So meaning, you know, if he bought shares of Ripple, actual shares of Ripple on link to ink um, with XRP from Uphold, could XRP be a security? Gary Gensler, SEC, can you answer that question? Is it possible to buy a security with another security? I've never seen it happen. Um, and so if they are going to reference that XRP is a security, how is it that he bought Ripple shares on another platform using the digital asset XRP? It makes no sense, right? Then he adds uh, John Deaton, uh, Jeremy Hogan, but I like this. John Deaton says, I'm pretty sure that you can't use a security to buy a security. That's straightforward, right? Um, you're just asking for an opinion, right? We can't have an actual position on it from the SEC, but there's plenty of clarity from the Supreme Court. It's very clear. That was Racer XRP. Um, hang on, let's see. We got, scroll down here. I love some of these comments here. Seems like you're using it because it has the utility of a currency to make a purchase and that you didn't acquire it for profit. So therefore it isn't an investment contract. Now, I look at this, you have a lot of smart people out there in this space. We have a lot of smart people here on the chain. Tons of great feedback and commentary. Not everybody's an attorney. Not everybody was focused on uh, SEC rules and regulations and, and how we test and all this stuff uh, before all of this started to unfold. Um, but you see a lot of this. You know, you just, <laughs> the commentary. What happens if you accidentally buy XRP sold from Canada? Those are securities. Huh. Um, let's see. Yes, it can still be a security. That's uh, one. So, so you got some other feedback here. Let's see. Um, Gary Gensler doesn't answer questions. He just tweets worn out quotes and useless information, further covering up for, for Clinton Hinman, makes him culpable for events that occurred before his appointment. I think, you know, it's it, that's another conversation we'll get into later. But, you know, I, I like, I, I kind of like the, the feedback there because I looked at this, you know, what James was tweeting and I was like, you know, would the SEC actually implode uh, based off of that? Because it is a conundrum, right? And it's going to baffle traditional economists in the halls of the most prestigious of academia institutions for decades to come. Can you buy a security with a security? Could you imagine 10 years from now reading somewhere in the in the halls of uh, MIT or or other another prestigious uh, institution and they're studying uh, crypto 
uh, assets, and they come down to this question posed by James Rule XRP. You know, what would happen if I bought a security with something that the SEC deems a security, but otherwise, you know, is a currency? So very, very complex, very complex. Um, Jim D coming to us here from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Jim, I was up in Cape Canaveral um, last weekend, actually. Last Friday, uh, we were at the uh, Kennedy Space Center. So anyhow, uh, let's see. At Jim D, uh, security uh, marriage. Devon says, um, let's see. The SEC want all crypto to be securities for their own gain of fines to fund their department. <laughs> there you go. That's another approach to it. You know, who's going to fund uh, the SEC? And I think uh, I think maybe we uh, we singled it out. Now we know exactly uh, who's going to be funding the SEC. So let's see. All right, I've got some other stuff. So I, I kind of went through some of the uh, some of the articles that popped up um, over the past day or so. Uh, in relation to the SEC case, uh, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of drill down through some of the comments uh, and feedback that have come up, because as we get you know deeper and deeper into kind of the expansion of the crypto space, and, and one of the things that we've referenced here a lot is that politics seems to seep into economics, as we know economics seeps into politics. The two are very intertwined. Uh, maybe they shouldn't be so intertwined. Um, however, they are. So once we are able to acknowledge the fact that politics and economics coexist uh, one with the other and influence one to the other, uh, we're that much better off for it. And cryptocurrency is no different because cryptocurrency is also heavily influenced by the economics of politics. So when we start drilling into the economics of politics, then you start really looking at all of these scenarios that are unfolding in front of us a little bit different. So even you know to the point of this lawsuit being launched by Clayton and you know and so he you know obviously files a lawsuit SEC v Ripple one day prior to departure from office and you have to question that. And there have been, you know, multiple you know, questions around, you know, what was at the heart of, you know, Clayton filing this lawsuit? You know, was there some sort of, uh, uh, you know, nefarious purpose? Was there some form of a conflict of interest on uh, Clayton's part uh, when he filed this lawsuit? Or can we take it even a step further? Because it could just be very cut and dry. It could be, you know, Clayton was very, you know, much focused on Bitcoin and maybe his investments in one area, he was getting paid or whatever. And he files this lawsuit, leaves, and you could all say, hey, he did it on purpose because he wanted to crush uh, anything that wasn't Bitcoin. But I, that to me is like, you know, just too far out there. You know, I don't believe that, you know, whatever he's going to be doing from that perspective is going to have, you know, a major impact on raising Bitcoin at the expense of XRP. Um, however, you know, we can look at that and you can say there was a conflict of interest. And if there was, they're going to find out about it, whether it was Hinman or Clayton or whomever, um, and they're going to deal with it uh, when it comes to uh, whatever they found yeah, throughout discovery. And it's going to go to the next level. Uh, you know, within the, the court hearing um, and the facts will, will be the facts and they'll come out. However, when you start intertwining the politics of economics into the outcome of cryptocurrency, then we can see things, I think, a little bit, you know, clearer, uh, potentially a little bit differently, uh, because I look at this uh, to the point where you have a representative of the SEC from one administration that up to that point, for the most part, there were uh, of those within the halls of Congress that were outspoken or supportive of cryptocurrency, there was a very clear imbalance 
uh, more Republicans supporting and coming out vocal in favor of regulatory clarity for cryptocurrency and more Democrats that were opposed um, or just ignoring uh, any kind of clarity and adjustment or addendum uh, to the Securities Exchange Commission Acts of uh, 34 and the Securities uh, Exchange uh, the Securities Act of 1933. So we're talking about laws that were written almost 100 years ago. Um, and you had Warren Davidson and Darren Soto, a Democrat, but those two came out and wrote the tax Token Taxonomy Act. That's the politics of the economics. So if you don't have the clarity uh, and you don't have true clarity and you don't have proper clarity, clarity that will allow for the growth of innovation in the space, then what do you have? Um, and so then you take it a step you know, further. So now you have the, the launching of the Token Taxonomy Act that was for the most part ignored in the halls of Congress. Uh, and then you know you have a new incoming administration that probably behind the scenes, they already had some inklings of who is gonna be put in which places potentially. Um, at least they, you know, they have some knowledge. Um, and at that point they said, well, whoever, and, and I'm just trying to think, you know, what was Clayton thinking to launch a lawsuit the day before he leaves, you know, and, you know, it could be that, Hey, he doesn't care. He knows that he's going to get employ employment within the crypto space on his departure, uh, which is what happened. He ended up, you know, getting, you know, working within the crypto space. Now he serves on the advisory board of, of a large uh, uh, crypto company. Um, so was he anti-cryptocurrency? Is he a Bitcoin maxi that wants to crush the altcoin space? I don't know. You know, we can keep discussing and I'm sure someone here has a better answer uh, than I do. Uh, but, you know, we look at it from that perspective, then you have to take into consideration that, here you have uh, Clayton again leaving a departure from the SEC, a representative of one administration, knowing full well that uh, that you have a new incoming administration coming in a short period of time, in a matter of weeks, right? Uh, you have a new incoming administration drops the most, you know, a massive lawsuit. Now consider that Clayton gets employment in crypto. Nobody really knew exactly what his passion for the crypto space at large was other than he had spoken about bitcoin at one point hinman speaking about ethereum at one point um but you know now you look at his you know overall perspective so when he uh, filed this lawsuit politically speaking economically speaking what was his motivation that's what we have to focus in on was it individually motivated Again, I don't know, you know, uh, others uh, in the space when they, you know, they go through their lawsuit, that'll come out. They'll figure that part out potentially, maybe never. Uh, but you look at the activity, look at the action, look at the occurrence, look at the timing of events that was happening at that exact moment in time. So he departs from the SEC with the biggest lawsuit in cryptocurrency history. One of the biggest, uh, you know, um, outcome potentials in cryptocurrency history coming on the heels of another, uh, you know, you know, we two filings of the Token Taxonomy Act that were ignored. Congress dragging their feet, the Senate being completely oblivious or ignoring cryptocurrency in its entirety. Right. So here you have them throwing out the biggest political landmine probably ever left by any outgoing SEC chair ever. Throws out this political landmine. Why? Because knowing full well, there's two things that have to come out of this type of a case. One is to settle the regulation aspect. Number one. Number two, he's throwing it in the face of the new incoming SEC chair, whoever that might be, and the new incoming administration saying, here you go. This should have been handled by Congress before. Here you go. Good luck. I'm out. I'm going to work in the crypto industry. 
Now, if he goes to work in the crypto industry, don't you also then think full well that he had some inkling of a possibility of an outcome from this case? Again, I don't know. I'm just trying to read into the events on the ground uh, to try to figure out again why the case then, you know, but, and, and my response on this is because there's so many in the space that keep singling out and focusing on Clayton as the bad guy and be very well may have been. However, he drops this landmine. It falls into the lap of the incoming SEC chair and the new administration that have that have completely fumbled this case, right? They fumbled the idea of regulatory clarity with cryptocurrency, right? So we're looking at this from a perspective that the SEC under the new chair, under the new administration has come out aggressively singling out and targeting XRP holders. Aggressively, statements that have come out from this SEC against XRP holders under the current chair, not under the previous chair, under the current chair. And at the same time, you have a ridiculous infrastructure bill. Now, say, say ridiculous because it's $1.3 trillion and we know that only 8% was going to real infrastructure. And in that infrastructure bill, they decided to cram in regulation of cryptocurrency that would demoralize and devastate the cryptocurrency industry in the United States for years to come. Now, current administration, current SEC chair, fumbling a case against Ripple, attacking XRP holders, taking letters and recommendation from those like uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren and Janet Yellen and Brad Sherman, the Shermanator in California, who will continuously focus and emphasize on the nefarious purpose of the crypto asset space while completely ignoring and denying the fact that corruption and, and nefarious use has always been backed up and supported by fiat currency. So now if you look at the politics of the economics, which you have to do, so many when we get into this, they say, take the politics out. I don't want to talk about politics. Well, if you don't talk about politics, when we're talking about government involvement, then what, when are you going to talk about politics? <laughs> at what point does the political aspect impact the economic outcome? We know that economics impact political outcomes, right? Because you have tremendous millions of billions of dollars in lobbying efforts to push and convince and coerce representatives in Congress, both the Senate and the House, for a specific outcome for that lobbyist group. That's what they do. That is the economics of the politics. That's economics influencing politics. They're intertwined. The cryptocurrency space has to grow. SECs around the world are in this turmoil battle right now with the central banks trying to determine if a central bank digital currency is going to be the right direction, which we know is no different than a fiat currency. But there's a struggle going on right now between the brick and mortars that are trying to hold on to everything that they have. Obviously, I wouldn't expect anything different. They did it up to this point at the sacrifice of the digital asset space. <laughs> they see the direction that DeFi, decentralized finance, and the digital asset space, they understand the direction it's moving in. They know that their stranglehold on the economics and the politics is in jeopardy of moving over to a new class of leadership. There's millions, if not billions of dollars in cryptocurrency. They know that. The political powers are trying to buy their time and are trying to appease the lobbyist efforts, those that pay their bills, appease them with ridiculous bills, like that infrastructure bill and the crypto that was rammed into it. 
That's ridiculous. But it all circles back then to the SEC. As far as I'm aware, Gary Gensler, the chair of the SEC, has said nothing positive about cryptocurrency. It seems that at every movement, his outcomes are to peril and penalize those that are involved in the crypto space. I don't see regulatory clarity and involvement and financial inclusion coming out of a Gary Gensler at this point in time. <clears throat> He's been there and the SEC under this administration has been in power since January. Let's count it on our fingers. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Eight months. Eight months they've been in charge of this outcome. And yet people still want to focus on Clayton as the bad guy. Clayton was the one who filed the lawsuit. This administration and this SEC has been in charge of said lawsuit for eight months. So at what point do we then try to realize and try to get a better understanding of the direction this is going in? I can tell you that the SEC and the Senate, the Congress in the U.S., have never, ever expected the outspoken within the crypto community. Never. They've never expected that. I keep looking. I don't know why I'm looking at that screen. I keep looking at an article that has nothing to do with what we're talking about right now. But um, the Senate has, they never ever in history have so many people so suddenly blown up the phone lines and the emails, gone after senators on a major scale to the point where they crashed the phone systems saying, what the hell are you guys doing? We are the crypto space. This is the newest asset class in this space. And we're building amazing things. Do not dare crush this space in the United States. Don't dare do it. What was the response? Five days they shut down that infrastructure bill. They debated it and they still put in ridiculous crypto legislation into the infrastructure bill. What does cryptocurrency have to do with infrastructure? Infrastructure are roads, bridges, and dams, railroad tracks. The biggest beneficiary of the infrastructure bill seems to be Amtrak at this point. I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. But anyhow, I mean, to go back you know, and try to reference all this stuff. It's crazy stuff. So anyhow, I got to go back. I'm really sorry. I kind of missed a bunch of commentary here. Um, James Rule XRP, appreciate that. Bought some Ripple with XRP. Catch me outside, SEC. <laughs> How do you like that? So he actually bought Ripple shares with XRP. I think the whole world's about to melt down, James. The whole world is imploding. You guys better stand back. Be careful. Because I don't know if the SEC is going to be able to handle this conundrum like we were saying earlier. James D says, we need to create a new crypto meme, uh, meme coin designed to inflate in value based on a government incompetence index. I love it. I love it. The uh, the GOV uh, uh, what would it, the GOV, you know, I token, government incompetence token, government incompetence dot IO. I love it. I love that index because right now that, that token would be so valuable to exceed Bitcoin at this point. People would be, it'd be crazy. That index, the government incompetence index on what's going on globally right now would just blow up. The thing is we'd have to have an index with all sorts of countries involved in it right? I mean, did you see the UK parliament has now come out and they condemned not just the Biden administration, but Biden himself for putting their troops and their people in danger, both from France and the UK and others, endangered not just Americans, but citizens of other countries that are over there. 
the index would be blowing up through the charts right now. It'd be crazy. It'd be crazy. So, so anyhow, so so this is all all interesting stuff, right? Um, let's see. Oh, there you go. Can you acknowledge the the elephant in the room? There you go, Anthony. So let's see. Um, I'm I'm just going back. I want to see some of the comments here. Uh, what does that say? Uh, does that say Theral side? Uh, it's an absolute uh, clear corrupt joke. How long until they do something? It uh, if time keeps going by, it suits their plan, picking winners as it allows other assets to get ahead while XRP is held down. That's exactly right. Exactly the case. Let's see. Gensler is just as bad as Clayton, if not worse. There you go. So, and that that's uh, a big part of it, right? <laughs> um, let's see. Chip, in other news, former USC uh, chair grifter Jay Clayton joins Fireblock's advisory board, and Fireblock was excited about it. That's right. They better be excited about it. That's it. So, all right, let me get over to this uh, this other article I had pulled up. Let me see. Let's add it to the stream. Let me do that here. Let me enlarge it for a minute. This is good, right? Because I, I referenced this. Now, this is John Deaton. John Deaton is the one leading the charge in the lawsuit on behalf of the XRP uh, community against the SEC. This is great, right? So, so you have, I, I like this uh, opening statement. <laughs> I've said from day one, I'm not an expert in crypto nor a securities lawyer, but it doesn't take an expert to see that plenty is very wrong, very corrupt, and very outrageous about the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple. I hope that clarity is on the horizon, but I fear that for the retail holders represented in our case, the fight has just begun. Right, John Deaton, managing partner at the Deaton Law Firm and lawyer for approximately 11,000 XRP holders in the context of the SEC v. Ripple lawsuit, has stated that the regulator is misleading. Look at that statement right there. Misleading the court. Now, we've seen, you know, some crazy things happen. Now, there's some other statements, and I'll pull up in another article that they didn't see any issue within the SEC in trading crypto until 2018, um, until they acknowledge it. But yet they're going back to 2013 in their claims. Now, Dean is saying the SEC is making a case against all crypto transactions from 2013. Uh and he said it was made clear in the court March 12th, where the SEC prosecuting attorney, George uh, Tenero, said every sale is a violation. These are their statements, right? So why would XRP be any different than any other crypto asset? That's the question. And that's going to keep being the question. And you can only, you can go to James Rule and say, James, did you buy a Ripple a security? with XRP a security? Is that possible? Can you buy a security for another with another security? We know it's not possible. You can't buy a security with a security. I, try it. You know, maybe you have Ford stock and you want to go buy General Motors stock and ask your exchange, go to Fidelity and see what they'll say. Is Fidelity going to say, "Hey, yeah, go ahead. You can you can just trade in your Ford stock for the General Motors stock." It doesn't work that way, right? So, uh, you know, it's it kind of goes on. Um, but look at, you know, so I'm trying to find, you know, one, let's see. Uh, well, we know that isn't true. What is worse, the SEC also knows it isn't true, said John Deaton, pointing to the case against Telegram that was ruled in the same district court, right? So, yeah, so I guess I skipped this part here. Issuer. So when pressed by Judge Nepper and about every individual in the world who's selling XRP, Mr. Tenero said that retail holders of XRP are protected under the exemptions of Section 4 and only the issuer is a legal target. So they come out and say every sale's a violation, but now if every sale's a violation, what about the retail holders? And it's in the world. So now 
How does the SEC of the United States all of a sudden dictate what is or what isn't a security everywhere in the world? You can dictate in the U.S. The last I checked, the SEC and the Securities Exchange uh, uh, Act of, uh, of 1934 and the Securities Act of 1933 did not pertain to anywhere else in the world except for the United States. The judge order used the term issuer as every person who issues or proposes to issue any security. That means any exchange who lists the token and any retail holder who sells it to someone else. That's what Deaton said. Let's get some clarity on that, some clarification. To narrow attempt to mislead the court goes further. We remember this stuff, right? It, we have reviewed all these things. We've talked to uh, Deaton about it too, but he was the lead attorney for the SEC in the Telegram case. He knows what he argued and what the judge ultimately ruled. He can't claim ignorance in front of Judge Netburn. So how crazy is this, right? Tries to come out and make some crazy statements still. Make no mistake, what happens in this case will have a major impact. This is Deaton. And, and this is, will have a major impact on what happens in this case. Oh, sorry. What happens in this case will have a major impact on the future of crypto, at least in the United States. Yes. That's 100% accurate. You know, whatever comes out of this case, which I go back to Clayton, filing the lawsuit, the politics of the economics, the economics of the politics, did Clayton plan for a certain outcome? By dropping that bomb in this administration and those that were coming in, did he know what he was up against? Did he know already what the sentiment of the incoming administration would be regarding cryptocurrency? Did he have an anticipation that this would somehow blow up in their face? Or was he fighting right there along with the new incoming chair, Gensler, and saying, hey, crush this space? I, I mean, that's a question you have to ask yourself. I, I don't believe that. I believe that Clayton filed it. There's more to it. I think it was a, a political landmine. I think he full well intended that there would be an outcome, that there would be some clarity when the case was fought, that the Ripple attorneys are some of the best in the world, that Clayton may or may not have thought that XRP was a uh, security, that Hinman may or may not have thought that XRP was a security. <laughs> but their personal opinion is as irrelevant as their personal opinion on Ethereum or Bitcoin in the grander scheme of things. Hinman's personal opinion of Ethereum is irrelevant to what the SEC case in the future could do to Ethereum if Ripple loses this case. It's irrelevant. <laughs> the SEC could do whatever they want. That's why this is the most critical case in history. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Maybe this administration and this SEC chair is in favor of crypto. Maybe they're not. You know, we got to figure that out. You got to figure it out quick. If you're in the United States, you better figure it out before 2022. Hopefully this case doesn't go to 2022, but it might. They might still be fighting this case in 2022 when the Congress switches. We'll find out. And when the Congress does switch at that point in time, does crypto legislation with true regulatory clarity, not some pissing match of the SEC v. the CFTC or a pissing uh, request from the current chair of the SEC to Congress asking for more control of cryptocurrency, more power at the hands of the SEC? It's all intertwined. It's all critical. You have to understand every aspect of this. So <clears throat> the absence of any protections granted or expressed for holders of XRP in the SEC's complaint against Ripple was deliberate. Interesting, right? Is that interesting? And they keep fighting that case. Maybe they didn't even anticipate it. I don't know. <laughs> Because if you look at the, and I'm not going to, you know, second guess or question Deaton's uh, commentary on that, 
Um, but if you look at what happened in in the kick case when the SEC uh, sued uh, kick uh, over the kin token, they had an outcome zero discussion of the retail holders of kin <laughs> zero. They paid a five million dollar fine. No outcome. The the retail holders of kin were like, well, what does that mean for us? And nothing, nothing, you know. Um, but I like Dean says here that the, the fact that there were no protections means that it was deliberate. If they wanted to reassure the millions of XRP holders, they would have done so at the beginning. Does he ask, so that goes back to the conversation. Um, you know what what Dean's bringing up here. This goes back to the conversation. Does the SEC really care about retail investors? Does he? Do, do they? Does the SEC care about the retail? Are they fighting for the retail investors or aren't they? Or are they fighting for power and control of a new asset class? Or are they fighting to, to do a decimate a new asset class? That's the question. You know, because if they don't care about the retail investor, which seems like over and over and over again, they don't seem to, then we have some concerns for sure. Chip says, Clayton can't join enough crypto companies fast enough. Money is his God. He would do and say what any money grubbing puppet would do. Everybody. Chip, that's anybody. Everybody. Anybody who singles out Clayton for taking a job with a crypto company because they're paying him millions of dollars when they would do the exact same thing, everybody would do that. I don't know anybody out there, you know, unless there was some wrongdoing leading up to that point. Let's let's say there was no wrongdoing up to that point. <laughs> because if there was, if there was a conflict of interest up to that point of filing the suit, there's wrongdoing. That's going to come out. However, after, if there's no regulation and no uh, criteria that states you cannot take a job in an industry that you filed a lawsuit against uh, or a company in that, there's no such regulation. He comes out. The fact that he's working in crypto means that he knew that crypto is the future. He also knows that he's getting paid millions of dollars to represent and work with cryptocurrency companies. Those cryptocurrency companies also know that Clayton is in the know. If you want regulatory clarity and you want people on your side and you're going to do things right, you bring those people from, from, uh, from those organizations and you hire them. Just like Ripple has hired multiple people that have come out of the SEC or, or attorneys. Just like Binance hired Brian Brooks. Brian Brooks then departed Binance, said, you know, they, they didn't see eye to eye on things. Of course, you know, because with Binance, you know, Binance is in, in, is in regulatory implosion right now. They've had so many missteps that Brian Brooks said, I cannot connect my name to this entity any longer until they clean up their act. Departed. That's my opinion. That might not be a what happened. That's what it looks like to me. You know, but again, I'm not going to fault Clayton for taking a job in the industry. Everybody invested in this industry right now would like a job in this industry getting paid millions of dollars. Why not? This is the industry that is the future. Now, if you understand that this is the future, would you go back and work for brick and mortars or would you go and work for the future? I would work for the future. I mean, it only makes sense. Devon Steve says, why can't the SEC see that any chain that is created has crypto? By their definition, all crypto is security. The tokens have to be released somehow. Uh, what? Just give it away? Not even recoup R&D? It's insane. It's insane. Jenny says, the kin is looking nice. It's been up over 200%. So, and a lot of great comments here. Ian, Ian uh, SEC, they don't care for us. Um, I had to have major life-saving surgery and my XRP value went down thanks to the SEC needed money to pay for my operation. The SEC devastated people. Devastated. 
right? Think about that. When they filed that lawsuit, how they impacted the lives of millions of people, do they seem to care? They don't really seem to care about that. That didn't even factor in. And that goes back to uh, John Deaton's comment where he said the absence of any protections granted or expressed for holders of XRP in their complaint was deliberate. If they wanted to reassure millions of XRP holders, they would have done so at the beginning. But not only that, they would have tried to figure out when we file this lawsuit, millions of XRP holders are probably going to be hurt. Maybe it's going to come back. Most likely it's going to come back. The crypto space is the future, regardless of what they do. Even if they push it offshore from the US for a short period of time, those that hold will continue to hold. The crypto space will continue to develop. XRP will continue to develop. Look at Japan. Look at Asia. Then you look around the world and you start seeing the, uh, the weaving of the politics into economics everywhere. Look at China. Look at the digital yuan. What is the political ramification of rolling out a digital yuan for regional influence, control of their own population and those outside? Think about that. So much. All of it is intertwined. DNI says, get your crypto out of the U.S. I don't know. I think the uh, crypto space is so far forward. This government and the, this administration is bungling everything they touch. Everything they touch has turned into a disaster. Everything. Our economy, our supply chains, <laughs> their, their impact on the health and wellness of the population. Our presence over in the Middle East, the poor people of Afghanistan, the poor people of the future when terrorism rises to a level that people have never seen before. I look at some of the leadership that have been talking over the past week. They said they did not anticipate what happened over in Afghanistan, just like they did not anticipate that the crypto community would rise up with passion and call the SEC and be on every SEC call or call every senator and every congressperson and say, what the hell are you guys doing regarding cryptocurrency? But they're ignorant, but they're naive. They said they didn't see and foresee the fall of Afghanistan in 24 hours. I saw it. I've been a student of politics and economics my entire life. I saw it happen. I studied the, the ins and outs of the Chinese economy, the growth out of communism into capitalism. I studied the political ramifications of the Middle East, of every country, of every border. You know, of, of, you know it's, just, it's just like it's asinine. The rise of terrorism. Everybody knew. Everybody knew that the Taliban in Afghanistan filtered back into society, planning, plotting, waiting, because they don't think in years, they think in more than decades, they think in centuries. There's a setback. And they came out in full force. This government, this administration bungled that to such an extent that it's going to impact us economically, it's going to impact us militarily, it's going to impact our security, it's going to in impact our economics. Everything touched is turning bad. I'm just shocked. I, I mean, it's just, it's shocking to me. Cryptocurrency in the cryptocurrency space, everybody here are just brilliant people from all over the world, all over the world. You know why? Because you're taking responsibility for yourself, you know, for the first time ever, right? And we've talked about this. I, I feel like a broken record. I say this every single time. But man, Taiwan, if I was an ally of the United States right now, I would be thinking twice. 
just as a citizen of the U.S., I would be thinking twice about this administration's support of the cryptocurrency space. Twice, three times, four times, maybe five times the charm. 2022, you get to have your voice heard. You get to oust Republican and Democrat alike that came out against cryptocurrency. I don't care. Get rid of the Republicans, get rid of the Democrats, whoever is against cryptocurrency and is trying to devastate this space because that's what you're passionate about. If On The Chain was a lobbyist organization for cryptocurrency, I would say, personally, I have a lot of other opinions. <laughs> I have a lot of other passions, right? But Manuel is saying that my political views are losing him. Man, Manuel, stick with us because eventually you'll see through it, man. I'm telling you, I can keep you, I can keep you on, you know, little by little, um, you know, you'll, you'll get it. You'll understand my perspective. You'll understand it. It's critical, you know, but anyhow, enough of that. Enough of that. We're going to go into something else. I mean, it's just, this stuff just riles me up. Sometimes it loses people. Like I came here just to hear about positive stuff about crypto. The Saturday show, we're dissecting everything. I'm super positive about crypto. What I'm just saying is that we need to wake up beyond just, you know, investing. We need to wake up like John Deaton woke up and he filed a lawsuit against the SEC on behalf of the XRP community. We need to wake up and make sure that the next representatives that go into Congress in the U.S. are pro-crypto. That's what we need to make sure of. We need to make sure those that are there all over the world. I'm worried about our people over in Australia. I see stuff on the news. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if they're you know rounding people up over there the way that I've seen this. <clears throat> That's just a just a, a little minute representation of what they can do or want to do. Imagine now they control your finances with the CBDC, digital currencies, <clears throat> CBDC, central bank digital currencies. Imagine they control you with a digital uh, dollar, the digital you want. Imagine they say, not only can you not go shopping, but we're going to shut down your bank account. We're not going to allow you to spend a dime unless you do what we say. Is that acceptable? Are you guys okay with that? You have to ask yourself, are you okay with the mentality of the people that are on the streets today? Are you okay with that? Are you okay with a government organization dictating and determining what you can and cannot do when it's your right to do it? I'm not saying criminal activity. So you want to walk down the street, you want to go to the store and buy food. That's your prerogative. They're going to stop you from doing that. They're going to round you up, <laughs> shut you down, limit how you can earn, close your business, devastate you economically, take the money out of your pocket. Are you okay with that? I talk to so many people who are passionate about their future, passionate about economics, passionate about their children and their children's children, passionate about trying to create generational wealth. But yet, when it comes down to it, they're not willing to stand up for it. You go back to the 1930s. People have asked so many times, how is it <clears throat> that the Nazi party came to be? How is it that people were willing to accept it little by little, incrementally, step by step? They sat back and did nothing until it was too late. Can we learn from history? Can we? take even just a little application of that knowledge and understand it accurately? Can we apply it even to what's happening right now? Can you then say, you know, as you look around and say, you know, this new digital asset class that's allowing people all over the world 
to have a better future. It's amazing to me. I, I'm, I, it's still so difficult to wrap my head around this idea that even in developing countries, people for the first time are gaining this opportunity. And I've said it over and over and over again, but I can't wrap my head around it. I mean, it's amazing to me, right? Check this out. I know I've talked a lot about this. I go into these rants. You guys are feeding back. You guys are having an amazing conversation. But check this out. Hang on. Check this out. Money reimagined Afghan activist Roya Mahub on crypto. Afghanistan. Bitcoin surely doesn't fix Afghanistan, but it could play a very important role as an alternative financial system. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if the people of Afghanistan had money in crypto? Now, granted, they could shut down the entire grid, the entire electric grid. They could try to block them. They could try to do all these things. But could you imagine if you put the power into the hands of the people of Afghanistan, what they could do for their country. They're up against unsurmountable odds. It was gut-wrenching watching that scene as a father lifted his child, his baby, up over the wall as a U.S. soldier grabbed the baby from the hands of this father. I don't know how you can watch scenes like that and not not be passionate. And, and you see that and this father's like, take my child to the United States. Take him out of Afghanistan because I fear that he won't have the life that he should have. But look at this. Look at this. So as I launched this week's newsletter with a column addressing how crypto can help the women of Afghanistan in a struggle against male oppression that has suddenly become horrifyingly more intense. I'm wary of overstating my case. Still, I ask you to hear me out. A unique opportunity looms for crypto to be genuinely useful in Afghanistan. I listened to a reporter from the grounds of Afghanistan, a 28-year-old Afghani woman who has basically you know, been raised during this period of time that We've had a conflict. We've had American troops on Afghani soil fighting. She's been raised through this period of time. And yet as a woman, she's now working as a reporter in Afghanistan. And her mother told her to leave. She said, you have to leave. And she can't. There's no way. But look at this. I mean, this is amazing to me. This is uh, for this week's podcast. We moved two countries to the east of Afghanistan to discuss the Indian government's uh, biometric digital identity system known as Adhar. So there, forget that. When Paul Vinga and I wrote The Age of Cryptocurrency seven years ago, its opening lines featured a tale of how the blogging uh, platform, the film Annex, had contracted some teenage women attending a digital education school in the Afghan city of Harat and was paying them in Bitcoin. Uh, it's amazing. People across the world in the crypto space are like, wow, you know, what in the world's going on over there? How could cryptocurrency help these people? <laughs> it's amazing, right? I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable. It really is. It really is. They're rounding people up in Australia trying to force uh, Vax injection. And where can we go and what can we do? Everything is tracked. Huh. Uh, yeah, crazy stuff. I'm trying to, here we go. Uh, XRP for me. Good morning, Jeff. Unfortunately, many people are myopic in their thinking and don't realize the impact of the corrupt politicians, safety or freedom, but people in the U.S. take their freedom for granted. It's almost like one of those statements you read that and you're like, what else do you say, right? Taking our freedoms are granted. I I'm shocked. We had over 200 people on here. We had 17 people drop off. There, Manuel, I hope you're still here listening. You don't get my, my, my politics. My politics are the politics of rational thought, 
of rational analysis as I look around the world. I try to understand the, the interaction of every entity, both political and economic, as I've done my entire life. I just hope that I can just give like a little bit of a, a fraction of that. We could have a whole conversation on the Middle East. You want to have a you want to have a, a conversation strictly on the Middle East, on the development of the Middle East, current politics starting in the 20s. You want me to have a conversation like that up to current day? We can do that. You want to talk about communist China and it's and it's move into uh, capitalism. You want to start breaking down parts of Africa, Latin America, the United States. Cryptocurrency to me represents freedom for everybody. People around the world from every country want to come to the United States because this is the freest country on earth. I just hope that we could continue to see through the nonsense and not support politicians that will try to devastate our innovation in this space. So we can help people like this over in Afghanistan experience financial freedom from the oppression that they face over there. Countries in Africa, countries in Latin America, look at El Salvador. El Salvador got pushed back in the streets because they were implementing Bitcoin as a currency. <laughs> so, so they're implementing Bitcoin. Then the powers of be said, but the power consumption. And then we learned that El Salvador is sitting on a pile of volcano power. How amazing is that? How amazing is that? So there's so many amazing things. I, I always go on to this rant. There's so amazing, so many amazing things to cover. So many amazing things to talk about. But I do know, I do know going back to the SEC, I do know there's a struggle going on right now between the SEC and the CFTC, right? I know that the SEC has completely lost their way. I don't know when it started. It didn't start under Gensler. The SEC lost their way a long time ago. But look at this, the SEC and the ESG advocates want to know how well companies are treating their workers. How is this? I want to know how companies, big companies like Apple and Amazon and all those, all these major companies, Nike and all of them, push their manufacturing over to China. Have the audacity over here to tell us how to live our lives. Talk to us about freedom. Human interaction. When the labor over in China has always been borderline slave labor. How are they okay with it? How are we okay with it? But how is it at this point, the SEC staff, Gensler wants the SEC staff to consider a human capital disclosure requirement for companies. I don't know if I'm okay with that. I don't know that it's the SEC's responsibility to have a human capital disclosure. But I also don't want these companies covering it up. I want to know. I want to know what these big companies have been doing over in China and elsewhere, how they treat their workers overseas. The ESG and worker advocates say better paying wages are material to financial performance because worker turnover can destroy business. They're not talking about what happens outside the US. They're talking about here. I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with it. I don't want government infringement on private business to that extent. Labor. This is about unions. This is about government regulation and control. This has nothing to do with the abuse of human capital internationally. Forget that. <laughs> Forget I even brought that up. Man, oh man. So what a crazy time we're living in. I know I lost a lot of people here towards the end and we are at the end. You guys are amazing. I love you got, there's just been so many, uh, 
great comments that have gone through. I just hope I'm stimulating thought process. If you disagree, that's awesome. I love the disagreement. And I would hope that you would put it in to the commentary. That would be great. James Rule says, if I, if I bought Jeff a coffee at Starbucks with BTC, I hope he likes cold coffee. It's going to take a long, long time to get over here. There you go. You guys are outstanding. You know what I forgot to do right in the beginning? I can't believe I didn't do it. I just got completely sidetracked and lost. But this video is brought to you by Permission.io. I can't believe I just I got frazzled. Permission.io, you guys know about uh, your uh, your data, your personal data controlled and sold on the open market. Every time you see those ads pop up, those companies are making billions and billions of dollars off of you. Permission.io gives you a browser extension that allows you to capture your data and monetize your data. You can earn ASK token, ASK token, use a, using permission. Every so often a video pops up, you get to watch the video and you get to earn ASK token with that video. It's amazing watching the video. It's outstanding. It's really, really great. Um, you know, it's a great thing to check out. They're in the beginning stages. They're doing, I think, you know, if you look at the, 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 uh, um, here we go. I'm going to put this up here real quick. Let me throw this in here. There's going to be some amazing things coming out of that project, I believe, um, uh, because it's changing. They're changing the way you interact your data with the ads that you see, recapturing, outstanding stuff. You guys are amazing. Hey, by the way, we do stream six days a week, Sunday through Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow night's another night. Chip and I will be back here. Chip will be in the hot seat, in the co-host seat uh, with me as we dig in and we talk about cryptocurrency, the benefit to the market, the benefit to you, what's going on, what's the SEC doing. Maybe we'll look at some brand new projects that are out there, some new airdrops, all that other good stuff. I'll look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. I am out of here. See ya. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.